Hey everybody, this is Pete with Heidi Outboard Motors. Today we are talking about getting your motor prepped and started for our 99 25s. These are basically our motors that all happen to have tiller handles, electric start, and external gas tanks and gas lines. So uh, what we're gonna do today is talk about what comes in the package. We're gonna talk about getting them oiled up, gassed up, going through the basic operations, getting them started, and then getting you out on the water. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, just like in our earlier videos and with any other motor, the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and remove the cowling. This is gonna provide us access to our oil tank. When you take a look under the hood, um, you can see a lot of the different parts coming through. Now these motors right now are carbureted. These are our four stroke carbureted line. Uh, our fuel injected line is slightly different, so we'll have a different video for that. But as you go ahead and explore under the cowling, you're gonna see things like the intake, you're gonna see your carburetor, we're going to see your oil dipstick, fuel filter, on the top of the starter assembly, you're actually gonna see an hour meter. This is really useful for maintenance and for keeping track of how many hours your motor has on it. As you wrap around even more, you're gonna see a big yellow cap. That's the access to our oil tank. And as you continue around, you'll see your spark plugs, you'll see your electric starter assembly, and so forth. So the first thing we're going to do, after just giving a general inspection of what's under the hood, is put oil into our oil tank. Now the 99s and up, they have kind of an interesting feature. On our smaller motors, the dipstick and the oil cap are all built in one. But on the 99s and up, you have two separate areas. So you have your um, oil cap here, and then you have your dipstick on the side. They're two separate pieces. So we're gonna always fill our oil through the back by removing the yellow oil cap. The 99 takes just under a quart. The manual says about 0.85 quarts to get this filled up properly. So you're always gonna to wanna to have, again, your trusty clean funnel that will go into the oil tank and your oil. We're just using a conventional 10W30 on this model um, and that's what's recommended, so that's what you can do. Nothing fancy, anything you could get at any marine store or even an auto parts store. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just start adding our oil here. All right, so we've added the right amount of oil and we've given it a couple minutes to sit still. So we're gonna go ahead and check the dipstick. When you reach in, just underneath the carburetor, you'll see uh, the dipstick. It's got a yellow plastic handle, pops out pretty easily. And you're gonna go ahead and lay it on your, your towel here and clean it off. Give it one more dip into the oil. Pull it out again. And you'll see on your dipstick that there are some gridded out scores on here. If your oil is in the center of those scores, you're in good shape and you're ready to move forward on starting the motor. This one is perfect, so we're good to move on to the next step. Okay, now that the oil is in and our level is looking good, we went ahead and turned the motor around so we can show you the front side of it. Um, we wanna point out some key parts here, first thing. If we start on the left side, we start with our choke. This is what we're gonna use when we start the engine from a cold start. So the first time you start it, the first time you have it out for the day, you're gonna actually pull this out to start it. We'll talk about that in a moment. Next, we have our electric starter button. So this is what you're gonna push uh, to start the motor if it's connected to a battery. If it's not connected to a battery, you've always got the manual pull mechanism up top and um, that works as well. The third thing down the line is our hookup for our fuel line. Uh, in a moment, we'll show you how to connect your fuel line to your external gas tank and connect it right up here. Next to that is the oil light. Uh, this light does a couple of things. When you first start the motor, it'll actually flash just as the motor's getting running. But during normal operations, if you see this light on, it means there's an issue with your oil, your oil pressure, or something like that. So you're gonna wanna stop the motor and address that. We'll talk about that more. Next down the line is your gear shift. This has three forward, neutral, and reverse. So three positions. Um, one important thing to note, which we'll note again, is that to start the motor, it must be in neutral, in the center position. So we'll talk about that in a moment. 
Next we have our um, red plastic coated kill switch. This is a safety switch. Um, in each box for every motor that we have, you get a safety lanyard that clicks into this and that is required to be in there uh, in order for the motor to run. So uh, typically people will clip this up, start the motor, and then go ahead and attach it to their life jacket. And then if there was a problem or somebody fell overboard, it would kill the engine instead of the engine continuing to, to go. We also have our tiller handle here, which acts as our uh, steering mechanism. And on the end as our throttle control. When we rotate that, it goes ahead and speeds up or slows down the motor. And finally, on the front, we also have our cables for, to connect to our battery. This is paramount if you want to use the electric start. It does need to be hooked up to a uh, 12 volt battery, um, and that's what gets you started. And we'll go in piece by piece and get you connected in there. Now that we've had a good look at the internal side of this motor underneath the cowling, we have a good idea of where the parts are, we have a good lay of the land, we have a good concept of where the different connections are on the front and what they're all used for, we're going to go ahead and sidestep and talk about our battery and our external gas tank. So every Heidi motor that has an external gas line hookup comes with that external gas tank. Uh, these are approved for safety um, and they give you a, a nice quantity of gas to get you out on the water and keep you out there for quite a while. They also come with a gas line. This gas line is what connects your tank to the engine, so that keeps the stream of fuel moving effectively. Um, let's take a look at the different components of the gas tank. The first thing we have here is just the gas cap. So you unscrew that. When you go to the gas station to fill up, you can remove this from your vehicle or remove it from your boat, set it on the ground near the gas tank, remove the main cap, and there's a little filter in here. And then you can just fill it up um, as your car or as anything else you'd fill up. Um, it is good to note that you wanna keep everything as clean um, and keep any contaminants out of there as much as possible. It's also good to note that you can use regular 87 octane. Um, there's no special treatment. There's no special type of gas that you need to run this motor effectively. Um, so keep that in mind when you're at the pump. The top of the cap also has a vent, uh, which you can unscrew a little bit. Uh, the fuel system needs to be vented, which allows for air to come in um, and displace gas. And that's what keeps the fuel going to the tank and it all runs together. The next part we're gonna point out on the tank is the fuel line assembly. It is actually has a copper looking component and a silver looking component. This actually mirrors uh, the setup that is on your outboard. And when you look at your fuel line, the one that comes with it, you're gonna notice that as you observe the setup of this um, connector, it is also the same here. One interesting feature of this fuel line is it has a bulb on it and the bulb has an arrow on it. This bulb is used to prime it. So once we connect the hose to the tank and to the motor, we're gonna actually squeeze this pump uh, to help the fuel start its way along uh, the line from the can to the motor. But it also helps us in knowing which end to hook up. So there is an arrow that shows us the direction that we want the gas to travel. So that means this end will be connected to the motor. We want the gas going this way to the engine. Meaning, of course, that the other end is what we would connect to the gas tank. And it's very simple. You just line it up. Again, there's a larger connector point and a thinner connector point. Line those up, push it in, and a click lets you know that it's on there. We'll do the exact same thing as we run it over to the motor. Lining up the larger terminal and the smaller terminal, push, click, and it's ready to go. One thing to note about the gas tank is depending on the boat that you're putting this in, there's a lot of different positions and places you can put the gas tank. This has about a six foot um, length on the hose, so um, you can strategically put this gas tank to where it's easily accessible, uh, where if it'll help distribute weight in a smaller boat. You have a lot of options for where this goes. The next component that we have over here is our battery. This is what is gonna allow us to use our electric starting mechanism. If we don't use that, 
Then we have to use our manual pull, and that's okay, but it's really easy to just push a button instead of yanking on a, on a cord. So we're gonna go ahead and start by addressing what kind of battery we, ha we have here. This is just a typical 12 volt marine battery. Uh, it looks like a car battery. They do make smaller ones and they do make bigger ones. Um, to start these motors, you just need a 12 volt battery that will supply the voltage required to get this thing starting. And it hooks up very easily. It's very similar to a car or anything else. There is a negative terminal and a positive terminal. And if we remove these caps, we expose the terminals. Uh, the ones on the outside are for a per more permanent connection, and the ones on the inside are actually um, for designed for the motors. They come with a, the nut to screw on the top. So we take our cables. Black is for negative, red is for positive. We lay them on here. For our demonstration, I'm just securing this with my hand. And then we do our positive terminal. Securing that with my hand. If you've never worked with a battery, a 12 volt battery, there's a huge danger of being electrocuted. There's a danger for shock. There's all kinds of dangers. Um, if you're not comfortable working with a battery, uh, talk with someone who is, read the manual, research online, watch some videos, make yourself comfortable with this, or have someone who already is comfortable and knowledgeable do all this for you. Now, we've got everything we need. We have a good understanding of the pieces of the motor and what each of them does. We are connected to a fuel tank that we have pumped and primed, and we're connected to a 12 volt battery. So this is ready to run. Um, what we're gonna do is now move this over to one of our test bins. We'll go through this process one last time, get it started, and um, hopefully we'll have success. So we'll see you over there. Okay, we went ahead and we moved our 9.9 outdoors. We're going to go to the next steps and just get this motor running. So let's take a look and have a quick recap of what we covered on the inside. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is that there's three individual components being connected to our motor right now. First is our green hose line. This is connected to a piece they call rabbit ears that goes over our impeller, just over the propeller. This system is what sends water into the motor to keep it cool. These are all water-cooled engines, so whether you're using rabbit ears on a hose or a big bin and submerging the lower unit, or you're just starting it for the first time out in a body of water, you need to make sure that the motor is submerged uh, beneath the impeller line so that way it can stay cool so we don't have any overheating issues. The next thing we have is our battery line. This is going directly to the terminals on our battery, which we showed you how to connect earlier. And then we have our fuel line. This is going to our fuel tank. When we want to prepare it, remember we have our plunger. It's telling us which way the fuel's going. And we're gonna go ahead and give it a few squeezes until that bulb gets nice and tight. Then you know it's primed. You can also look under your cowling at your fuel filter and you'll see the fuel going in there. Um, and then you'll know that fuel is making it to the engine. Since we have all these three components hooked up, let's go ahead and reacquaint ourselves with the front uh, panel here of the engine. The first thing I wanna point out is a little component that came in the box, this red uh, springy lanyard safety clip. Okay, on the front we have our red plunger. This needs to be out, and therefore the clip needs to be placed in in order for this motor to run. So we click that in there. On the other end we have our metal clip this can go um, in one of two or three different places. So some people will clip it on a life vest or a belt loop. Other people will wrap it around their wrist and clip it like that while they're driving the motor. Just in case there was an accident, they fell overboard, it would pull that clip, that would kill the motor, and then your boat doesn't take off uh, on you or into you or away from you. The next components we're gonna talk about again is our choke on the far left next to our push button start for our electric start our gas line hookup, our oil light, our shifter, and our tiller handle, which steers our motor and adjusts our throttle when we're in the water and on a boat. And of course, our manual pull should we need that. So here we go, we're gonna take our safety clip, connect it into there, I'm just gonna let it droop. Then I'm going to notice the front, I'm gonna make sure that my engine is in neutral. What I'm gonna do is pull it all the way forward, so it clicks, then I know it's in forward gear, push it back one click, and that's it. So that should be a neutral. 
We're starting for the first time, so we need to pull our choke out. You'll notice that it's just a real gentle pull. It comes out about an inch. Um, that's just going to give it the right combination of fuel and air to get it started right away. Our gas is in. Our battery is connected. Our throttle is lined up properly. There's actually a red triangle on top of your throttle control that lines up with a circular indentation in the tiller handle. When you're first starting it, that's where you want it to go. It's slightly above idle and that keeps it running smoothly. If you started it when it was cranked up higher, it would be revving much higher when it started and generally we don't want to try to do that as a practice. So here we go. Chokes out. We're in neutral. Triangle is lined up. Safety switch is in. Let's give it a shot. The cool thing about the electric starts is we don't have to pull on this. We have our button. So all we're going to do is push on this button and see if it starts. It's going and it's running. So the first thing we're going to do is push our choke in. Now the motor is running in neutral, idling fine. If we twist the throttle a little bit, you'll see that we get that extra boost of gas, we get that extra rev out of it. One thing you'll notice when you first start the motor is occasionally on the first time, you might see a little plume of smoke coming out of it and that's okay, that's just exhaust um, and it'll work itself out. If you continually have smoke, then visit the troubleshooting area of the manual. You might have too much oil or another issue going on. Um, so that's it. We've got it started. We've got it running. Now if you're out on the water, you can let this warm up for a minute or two and then go ahead and move it into forward gear and take off or reverse. The last thing to notice is again, if this was to fall or pull out or you can even push it in and it'll kill the motor and, and just stop it. Congratulations on your purchase of your new motor. I hope this video helped you get it all set up safely and easily and that you're uh, going to have years and years of good usage out of your motor now. Uh, enjoy your time on the water and if you have any more questions or anything is unclear, feel free to visit us at HeidiOutboardMotors.com. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, anywhere. Um, feel free to reach out to us through our contact page, find us on YouTube or Vimeo and let us know if you have any questions. Thanks.